This time, like in this video, we are looking at the French Revolution. So first of all, we need to look at the causes of the French Revolution. As at the end of the 18th century, the French involvement in the Seven Years' War, and later the American Revolution, along with the extravagant spending by King Louis XVI, had left France in economic turmoil. So along with the effects of this economic turmoil, there had been two previous decades of poor harvests, drought, cattle disease, and severe increases in the price of bread. So this led to significant unrest amongst the poor, and many expressed their dissatisfaction with the regime by rioting, looting, and striking. So to help solve these financial problems, in the autumn of 1786, Louis XVI, Controller General Charles Alexander de Calon, proposed a financial reform package that included a universal land tax in which the privileged classes would no longer be exempt. So to gain support, the king summoned the Estates General, and this was an assembly representing the French clergy, nobility and middle class, which had not been called since 1614. So the meeting was scheduled for May the 5th, 1789, and in the meantime, the delegates of the three estates, which was the first, the second, and the third estate, would be able to compile lists of grievances. Now, the third estate was the poorest among the three estates, and they represented 98% of the population, but they could still be outvoted by the other two bodies, the first and the second estate. So this meant that in the lead up to the May the 5th meeting, the third estate began to raise support for equal representation and the abolishment of the noble veto, and the nobles were, however, not willing to give up these traditional privileges. So by the time that the Estates General had met at Versailles, the debate over the voting process had erupted into hostility between the three estates. So this both destroyed the original purpose of the meeting and it undermined the authority of those who summoned it, i.e. the royalty. So on 10th of June 1789, the theorist and Catholic clergyman, Abbe Sies, decided that the third estate would proceed with verifying their own powers and they soon voted for a measure declaring themselves the National Assembly. Now, although the other orders were invited, they made it clear that they would conduct the nation's affairs with or without them. So in an attempt to keep control of the process and prevent the assembly from convening, Louis XVI ordered the closure of the Salle des Etats, where the assembly met. Now, as weather did not allow for an outdoor meeting and the fact that they feared an attack ordered by Louis XVI, the National Assembly met at a tennis court just outside Versailles. Now, at the tennis court, they proceeded to swear the tennis court oath on the 20th of June, 1789. And in the oath, they agreed not to separate until they had given France a constitution. Now, they would soon be joined by a majority of the representatives of the clergy, as well as 47 members of the nobility, which meant that on June the 27th, Louis VI unwillingly absorbed all three orders into the new assembly. So the next thing to look at is the Bastille and the Great Fear, because this was seen as the start of the French Revolution. Because although there was some optimism about the recent breakdown of royal power, many Parisians feared the rumours of a military coup. So this led to the storming of the Bastille on the 14th of July 1789. And the Bastille was a political prison that represented royal authority in the centre of Paris. Now, although it only housed seven inmates at the time, the revolutionaries viewed it as a symbol of a monarchy's abuse of power. So when the prison governor refused to comply in giving the revolutionaries the ammunition stores, they stormed in and eventually took hold of the building. The governor was seized and killed, and his head was carried round the streets on a spike. So the storming of the Bastille was seen as the start of the French Revolution, and it is still celebrated as a national holiday today. Now, this event triggered the Grand Fear, also known in French as La Grande Peur. Now, this was in the countryside, and these members of the countryside would revolt against years of exploitation by looting and burning the homes of tax collectors, landlords, and the elite. So, the Great Fear hastened the exodus of nobles from the country and inspired the National Constituent Assembly to abolish feudalism on August 4th, 1789. Now, feudalism was the dominant social system in medieval Europe where the nobility would hold lands from the crown in exchange for military service, whilst the peasants would live on their lord's land in return for labour and military protection.
So on August the 4th, the Assembly also adopted the Declaration of the Rights of Man and of the Citizen. And this was a statement of democratic principles based on the ideas of Enlightenment thinkers like Jean-Jacques Rousseau. Now this document wanted to replace the old regime with a system based upon equal opportunity, freedom of speech and a representative government. Now as this was only a statement of principles rather than a constitution, the National Constituent Assembly had to draw up a constitution for the country. And adopted on September the 3rd, 1791, France's first written constitution was fairly moderate and it established a constitutional monarchy where the king possessed a suspensive veto. So in other words, he could delay the implementation of a law but not block it completely. The king could also appoint ministers. So this compromise did not sit well with influential radicals like Maximilien de Robespierre, who began attempting to raise support for a more republican form of government and the trial of Louis XVI. So the next thing that came was the execution of Louis XVI. As the constitutional monarchy had clearly failed, and on August 10th, 1792, a group of insurgents marched upon the Tuileries Palace, which was where the king resided. They assailed the palace and killed the Swiss guards who were assigned for the protection of the king. So the following month, the Legislative Assembly was replaced by the National Convention, which proclaimed the abolition of the monarchy and the establishment of the French Republic. So on January the 21st, 1793, the National Convention condemned King Louis XVI to death for high treason and crimes against the state. Now his wife, Marie Antoinette, suffered the same fate of the guillotine nine months later. So the period after the king's execution was the most violent stage of the French Revolution. And this was because of wars with various other European powers and the intense divisions within the National Convention. So in June 1793, the Jacobins seized control of the National Convention from the more moderate Girondins, and they started to implement a number of extremely radical measures. So this included the eradication of Christianity and a new calendar. Now the Jacobins also commenced the Reign of Terror, and La Terreur was a 10-month period where all suspected opposition of a revolution were guillotined. Now 17,000 were officially tried and executed, and an unknown number were executed without trial or died in prison. So one of the figureheads of the Reign of Terror was Maximilien de Robespierre, who dominated the Committee of Public Safety. On July 28, 1794, after many of the revolutionary leaders had had enough of the terror, Robespierre and many of his supporters were executed by guillotine. And this marked the beginning of a Thermidorian reaction, where the French people revolted against the events throughout the reign of terror. So finally we need to look at the end of the French Revolution. As on August 22nd, 1795, the National Convention, which considered mainly of the Girondins who had survived the reign of terror, approved a new constitution that created France's first bicameral legislation. Bicameral means having two chambers, so for example, in the UK, it's the Houses of Commons and the Houses of Lords. Now this meant that executive power would lie in the hands of a five-member directory appointed by Parliament. Now, although this regime was protested against by both the Jacobians and the Royalists, they were swiftly silenced by the military, which was now led by the young and successful general called Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, the Directory's four years in power were synonymous with financial crisis, popular discontent, inefficiency and political corruption, and they could only keep power through their military. So this meant that much of their power had been given to the military, and therefore, on November the 9th, 1799, Napoleon was able to stage a coup d'etat, and thus he abolished the directory and appointed himself France's first consul. So this marked the end of the French Revolution and the beginning of the Napoleonic era. So thank you for watching this video, and see you soon. Bye.